Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you now. Hi guys, welcome to One Minute Tennis. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the grips. And we've been asked a lot in the last two or three weeks, which grips do we recommend? Do we recommend uh, some specific grip for the backhand? Shall I change to a Western grip? Uh, what grip is the best to use? Now, I want to explain today, I don't recommend any grip. I let people find their own style. However, I do check whether the grips are fundamentally correct or not. So what I'm gonna run through today is why I don't recommend any specific grip, how we can tell the difference between a fundamentally correct grip and a flawed grip that won't work, and then I'm gonna give you a great concept on how you can find the right grip for you or help your players find the right grip for them. But let's start by explaining why I won't recommend a specific grip. Let's look at Rafa Nadal. Rafa has a Western or almost Western grip, and it's one of the greatest forehands there's ever been. If he'd have met a coach who was inflexible, who was dictatorial, and had made Rafa play with an Eastern forehand grip, would Rafa's amazing forehand have developed the same way? I doubt it. But Roger Federer has an Eastern forehand grip. And if Roger Federer had met a coach who demanded a Western grip, would Federer's forehand have been the same? Very unlikely. So if the, if the grip is fundamentally correct, then the person must be allowed to express themselves. I look upon teaching tennis as fundamentals and fashion. The tops that I'm wearing and you're wearing, every person that's watching this video, they're all the same, fundamentally. There's a hole for the arms, a hole for the body, and a hole for the head, otherwise they don't work. Fashionably, they'll be totally different. And tennis strokes are the same. They have to be fundamentally correct, but then the player has to have space to express themselves, to become the artist, and therefore reach their real potential. But although I won't recommend a Western grip or an Eastern grip or any of the different variations, we do have to make sure that the grips are fundamentally sound and they are either correct or incorrect. And the definition of this is really very simple. For the ground strokes, then we have to make sure that the wrist is behind the ball at the point of contact. So this is fundamentally sound. This is fundamentally sound. And this is flawed. And the same on the backhand. This is fundamentally sound. This is fine. This is getting weaker. And now we have a bad and fundamentally flawed grip. So quite simply, by making sure that the wrist is behind the ball at the point of contact, then we have good grips for the ground strokes. The volley, the drop shot, the lob, and the serve, of course, is covered by a continental or chopper grip. So I'm gonna to explain to you how to find the continental and chopper grip, because that is one specific grip for everyone. And then I'm going to show you how to find the right grip for your game or your player's game. There are two suggestions I have to find the chopper or continental grip. It's called the chopper, or in some countries the hammer grip, because if I put the racket at 90 degrees to the ground and make a chopping motion, then it's very comfortable. If I move anywhere off that line, if I move to a forehand grip, put the racket at 90 degrees to the ground and make a chopping motion, then it's uncomfortable. If I move to a backhand grip, put the racket at 90 degrees to the ground and make the chopping motion, then it's uncomfortable. Only in the perfect continental grip is this hammer motion comfortable and easy to do. So one way of checking it is to make this shape. A more precise way of finding it is to balance the racket in the left hand, have it more or less at 90 degrees to the body, bring it in front of the right shoulder, and then just grasp the racket. And that will be a pure and perfect continental or chopper grip. Now, if you have players or if you have a tendency to change grip during the service action, many people who've learned to serve with a forehand grip and then are trying to make the change, what they do is they'll check the grip and they're correct. They go into the service action and somewhere in the backswing here, they change the grip and they've gone into a forehand grip. If you think that's a problem in one of your players game or in your game, then here's a simple solution. Make the service stroke, and then have somebody feed you the ball and play a backhand volley. So you make the serve, and then you make the backhand volley. If you've changed the grip, then the backhand volley will be horrible. 
it will feel bad and be very uncomfortable. And that way you can be encouraged to keep the grip through the service action. But then we're going to the forehand and the backhands and there are many, many, many different grips. And I want to show you a little way of finding what's probably the right grip for you or your players. For the forehand, if you place the racket on the hand like this, and now what I'm going to do is from above, I'm going to grab the racket. Some players will pick the racket up in an Eastern grip. Some players will pick the racket up in a semi-Western grip. Some players will pick the racket up in a Western grip. Generally speaking, the way that that person finds the racket with their hand is the most natural and correct grip for them. On the backhand, if we put the racket underneath the left arm like this, I'm assuming we're right-handed, then what we do is I will, from above, I will grasp the racket. And now I have a backhand grip. Some people will take it like so and have an Eastern backhand grip. Some people will take it like so and have a much stronger backhand grip. But by taking the racket from this position, you will find the right grip for you. Try these grip tricks and see if they work for you or for your players. Please let us know in the comments section if this makes sense and if you think it will help your game or your players game or if you have any questions that we can help with. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe please. And remember if you need more help with your game, we offer a one-to-one -one consultancy service online. The link to this is in the website, the website's below. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique and different tennis lessons.